gonna wait a few seconds for anybody to hop on, but I am super excited. My name is Ashley, if you don't know me, and I just weaned my toddler off the boob after two years of nursing. So it was quite the process. And so I wanna share with you what I learned, um, how I did it, and all those details. So I see some people jumping on, say hi if you're here and you can hear me and everything's good. Of course, Moana is playing in the background, so hopefully Facebook doesn't take this video off if they can hear it. Um, but okay, I see some people on. So yeah, so let me just start by saying that the weaning process is really hard. And nobody told me about this, right? It's like when you have a baby, they're like, breast is best, breast is best, breastfeed, breastfeed, breastfeed. But nobody freaking tells you how to stop doing it. And I know, well, I know of like two people whose babies self-weaned. Most people I talked to were like, yeah, it's really hard to stop, to get them off. So if you are a mom who has then like been blessed with a baby who weans him, him or herself, like congratulations. Um, but mine would have nursed until she was 16. Like she wanted that boob all day, every day, all night. And I was like, I cannot take this anymore. I'm done. I'm out. So <laughs> um, let me start with the support that I had to to originally begin breastfeeding was amazing, right? So I had, I went to a breastfeeding class, had great support, had a book, the nurses in labor and delivery were amazing and helped me. I had a lactation consultant come and visit me in the hospital even though I didn't need her. This is the best part. When I took my daughter to her first pediatrician appointment, I called to make the appointment, they're like, well, it's an hour and a half appointment if you're breastfeeding. I'm like, what? And they were like, and you have to bring your nursing pillow because we make you see the lactation consultant. And I'm like, I just saw a lactation consultant in the hospital. I don't need one. She's fine. And they're like, no, it's mandatory. So I go to my daughter's first pediatrician appointment and it's a male doctor. And he's like, well, let me see your boobs. If there's any men watching, like you should just not watch anymore because this is like strictly a video for women. Um, so this male doctor is like looking at my boobs. He's a pediatrician. I'm like, this is freaking awkward. Did anybody, anybody have this experience? where their pediatrician wanted to see their boobs. Anybody, drop a heart below or say me, let me know, because I want to know if I was the only one. And then they were like, okay, now you have to go over here and sit in this room that looks like a living room and meet with a lactation consultant for an hour. And she like, again, taught me all of these different latches. Anyway, I knew a lot. I was like, I could teach breastfeeding now. Like that's how well supported I was. So we never had any issues. But to get her off the boob was another freaking story. So I go to the pediatrician and I'm like at her, I think it was her 18 month checkup. And I'm like, I want to start weaning her. Like, how do I do this? And the pediatrician was like, well, the World Health Organization recommends that you nurse until the age of two. And I'm like, well, that was no help. Like, how do I get her off? And she's like, well, you know, you could just start giving her more food. I'm like, you are of no help to me whatsoever, right? It's like they want to get you trapped and then there's no way out. That's, I literally felt trapped. Uh, so I have been wanting to wean her for some time. But when she turned two, I was like, all right, I've put my time in and I booked a trip. So my co my coach was generous enough to gift me this amazing trip to Phoenix for for a conference and I'm like well I have to have her weaned by then so that's why I was like oh my gosh like we gotta wean her like now so uh, so here's what I did okay I want to say that the women on Instagram <laughs> helped me a lot when I was in this weaning process I insta storied a lot of it and every day women would message me with like tips and things to read so Jay Gordon, Dr. Jay Gordon is the method that I use. Somebody sent this to me and it was amazing. I will post a link to it below. It's like a web page and I followed it and that's what worked for night weaning first. So I'm gonna talk about that in just a moment. Um, but what I, so Sean and I, we co-sleep with her <laughs> because we are such suckers and I know that the cry it out method is totally fine and many parents like it, but for us, like we are such wussies. Like <laughs> one time we bought lobsters and we couldn't even kill them. We were like, oh, we can't even kill them. Like we didn't even eat these, these lobsters. Um, 
so with London, we never let her cry. One time we tried the Ferber method where you let them cry for like three minutes and we couldn't even do it. We were like, no, we can't. So we are just like such suckers and, um, and never let her cry. So she nursed on demand all day, every day, all night long. She was like literally latched on all night long. So I have like the worst back pain and I'm like, we gotta get her off. So what I decided to do was we took her crib that she never ever slept in, we converted it to a toddler bed because I'm thinking, let's wean her by putting her in her bed and then she won't be so close to the boob and she won't want it all night. So I would lay in her toddler bed with her, get her to fall asleep, try to escape and how many of you know, okay, Julia, you're with me. You couldn't even let them cry for, let her cry for five minutes. Um, yeah, we couldn't even make it to like the first point where you're like supposed to go in and check. We're like, we can't do it. And let me go up here. And Ashley, yes. Oh my gosh, I had so much support. It was like, it was actually kind of annoying. Um, yeah, whatever works. So I'm like, I'm gonna, now here's, here's what I wanna know. If you've ever tried doing this, how many of you have yet tried to put your kid in the toddler bed nurse them, and then escape. It was like an hour-long process, right? Because I would have to like slowly slide my nipple out and then like slither out of the bed like a snake and roll and try not to make any noise. And it would always inevitably take three tries. She would always wake up and it would take three tries for me to successfully get out of the bed and out of the room. And I'm like a stealth ninja warrior, like somersaulting out of the room and like hiding my boobs and, and hoping that she wouldn't wake up. And then guess what? She would only sleep for an hour. So every hour I was waking up and then having to spend another hour trying to get her back to sleep and ninja escape from her room. So I was like not sleeping for like two weeks straight. And my friends, <laughs> in a group message, we're like, Ashley, let, let's sit down and talk about this. You cannot wean her and get her in her own bed at the same time. You have to choose one or the other. And we recommend you keep her in your bed while you wean her. And I'm like, really? Like, I feel like it'll be harder if she's near the boob. Like, she'll want it. And they were like, no, like, put her in the bed. And so this Dr. Jay Gordon method that I used, he also recommends having the baby in your bed as you wean. So I was like, fine, I mean, I've been making progress, getting her to sleep in her bed <laughs> for short periods of time, but I'll put her back in our bed. So I put her in my bed and here is the method. I started by night weaning and then transitioned to day weaning. So night weaning, the first three nights, here's what you do. You set a time frame where you will not nurse that baby or that toddler or that child, whatever it is. Um, so. I think he recommended 11 to 6 and I went with that. So from 11 p.m. till 6 a.m. there was no nursing happening no matter what. So I would nurse her to sleep in our bed, pull away, you know, try to escape but stay in bed and then when she woke up, which she did, I would let her cry and I would pat her and hold her and rub her back but there was no boob until 6 a.m. The first night was horrific. Horrific. She cried and cried and as somebody who has never let her cry, I was crying. Sean was like ready to lose his mind. It was awful. But Dr. Jay Gordon, he warned us in his little webpage. He said, it's going to be really hard. Imagine if for your whole life you slept basically on a buffet, right? Or you slept, you know, five inches away from your favorite restaurant and you could have whatever you wanted at any time. And then all of a sudden they're like, nope, restaurant's closed, buffet shut down for the day. You would freak the F out too, right? But you know that that baby or toddler is totally fine. They don't need any food, like they're fine. So I was just kept telling myself, she's fine, she's fine, like she has to deal with this. And so the first night she cried a lot, but she would go back to sleep. I mean, it was like an hour of straight crying and hysterically crying. And she did that, she woke up a few times that first night and cried for a long period of time. We stayed strong. Day two, she, she didn't cry as much or as for as long and didn't wake up as often. And then night three, she was able to sleep through the night. I nursed her to sleep and then she slept through the night. Now, after those three nights, here's phase two. Phase two is letting her go to sleep on her own without the boob. This was the hard part because she was always nursed to sleep because I was just like, whatever, like I will nurse you to sleep, I don't care. Now is no nursing to sleep. So then it became really challenging because she just like would be so mad and angry. So I would nurse her a little bit and then remove the boob before she fell asleep and she would freak the F out. So it was again, 
back to night one of an hour of straight crying and being crazy and just like, and I just knew, I'm like, she's two years old. She doesn't need to, to be nursed to sleep. She's totally fine, right? It was just having to change that behavior, but it was so hard, right? As somebody who never let her cry. So anyway, first night, she cried a lot, but then she fell asleep and she slept through the night without waking up, without needing the boob. And I'm like, this is amazing. Like, first time I woke up without a backache. So we did that for three nights. So the first three nights, I nursed her to sleep, but didn't give her any in the middle of the night. And the next three nights, I made her fall asleep on her own without the boob. And again, the, prog the crying got progressively lighter. And so by the third night, she was like cool with it and she goes to sleep. Um, so that's kind of, it took like six nights to get her to go to sleep and to sleep all night without the boob. And there was lots of crying in there, but kind of have to be prepared for that. Um, okay, so then in the daytime, I began to cut them out. So every time she would ask for food, I would give her, I'd be like, do you want chocolate? Do you want a lollipop? Do you want cake? Like I was just desperate. And there were several times, because here's what happened. This is what people won't tell you. I weaned her at night. So in the daytime, she was overcompensating. She would like want to be latched on for like three hours straight. And I'm like, oh, hell no, girl. Like this is not happening. But she just, I mean, she wanted to nurse more frequently and for longer because she's smart. And she's like, I didn't get any last night. You owe this to me in the daytime. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I, I stopped one problem, but it like created another one in the daytime. So I'm like, okay, we got we to gotta cut this down in the daytime. So I was just like desperate. I'm like, I will give you whatever you want. And she still, she would like turn down chocolate for like the boob. I'm like, oh my gosh, what is wrong with you? So I had to stay strong and every day I tried to cut out one feeding. So after the wean, weaned her at night, I kind of kept track. How many times is she nursing during the day? And you guys, it was like six times during the day. She's freaking two years old. So I'm like, okay, we're gonna cut this down. I'm gonna each day, I'm gonna try to cut out. Oh no, what's wrong? I'm almost done. Um, and so I would just give her food. So they, the shake that I have for breakfast every day, they have a kid's version. So I bought her the kid's version and I mixed it. She will not drink milk out of a cup, like any sort of milk. Here, do you want a color? She will not drink any sort of milk out of a cup. She like knows. So if I mix almond milk with this shake and put ice in it and banana and let her do it, like I let her pour the scoop in and put the banana in and we count five ice cubes. Um, she would then drink this shake. So I'm like, okay, that's her. She's getting her calcium. She's getting a serving of fruit and vegetables. And then I bought yogurts in a tube, like Siggy's yogurt in a tube. And she loves those. So that's, her. so the pediatrician told me three servings of dairy a day. So that's pretty much where she's good. She'll have like two yogurts, um, and then her shake. And so I was just like feeding her constantly and trying to give her as many snacks and whatever like she would take um, to not be on the boot. So then once I got it down to like three times a day, then I got it down to two times a day. This took like a week or two weeks. Like this was like a three week process. Once I actually learned what I was doing. For two weeks prior to that, I was like failing miserably and getting up every hour on the hour. So this was a long process, but hopefully I'm cutting it down for you. So do the three, the three nights weaning where they, you don't feed between a certain hour, three nights where they fall asleep on their own, and then do a week where you're cutting out feedings during the day. So then it was the weekend and I was like, we're done. Here's what we're going to do. So I let her nurse <laughs> as much as she wanted. And I said, London, this is your last day. You're a big girl now. Someone on here, um, a friend that I made, was like, talk to her about being a big girl. Like, tell her she's a big girl a lot. So I was like, you're a big girl. And now if I ask her, are you a baby or a big girl? She says, big girl. Um, I'm like, you're a big girl and big girls don't drink milk anymore. And we're gonna have a goodbye party for, your, for the boobs. And so I was like, say bye to them. Say, I'm gonna miss you. So she said bye to them. She said, I missed you and all that stuff. And I was like, tomorrow there's no boobs and nursed her and you know did all that stuff and we said bye we had a little goodbye party and then the next day was sunday and i was like no more and guess what she didn't even ask for it she like remembered from the night before that the boobs were gone she didn't ask for it but then the next day she started asking for it and i was like nope they're all gone and she would cry <laughs> but then she would be over it i'm like oh here look have you know have something to eat or something you know whatever i was like always trying to just distract her and give her something else um, she's eating way, way more, like 
an insane amount. She must be eating three times what she ate when she was nursing. Because she was nursing a lot. And now she eats like a ridiculous amount of food. So I would just kept giving her more food and making her really full. And that's it. So she still goes for them. I can't be naked in front of her. She'll be like, boob! And then we got in the bathtub together the other day and she like went for it and I was like, no! <laughs> it's like literally that Chucky um, video that I posted. Like I'm like constantly like fighting her. So I thought after two weeks she would have forgotten or she'd be like, oh, I'm done with them. But no, she's still fully aware that they're there and she wants them. But I'm like, no, we're holding strong. She's fine, she doesn't need them. So that was our experience. So nobody tells you that, it's really hard, it's heartbreaking, um, and that you have to be really strong. And you kinda just have to think about it as, okay, they've been on this all-you-can-eat buffet, and now you're telling them that this buffet is closed. So yeah, they're going to have to fight, they're gonna fight you a little bit. They're not gonna be happy, um, but they're fine, especially this professional. I'm not a professional, I'm just sharing you what my experience was. He said that you should really only do this with kids over the age of one. So if your child is under one, you shouldn't be doing this method that he uses. I don't know what you should do. Good luck finding out. Um, this is for kids over one. And she's two, so she's totally fine. Um, yes, Lindsay. <laughs> yeah, it was really, really hard um, because she just wanted to be on the boob literally all night and all day I and mean, it was crazy and I was just so done with it like I feel like a new woman so here's a funny story I went to um, Victoria's Secret this weekend because I'm like I have been wearing the same maternity bra nude colored maternity like sports not sports bra nursing bra since I was pregnant I bought it when I was pregnant and I've been wearing it for two years it's all stretched out it's disgusting so I went to, hold on baby, one second. I went to Victoria's Secret and the lady, I was like, can you measure me? And she's like, well, what size bra have you been wearing? I'm like, I don't know, like a stretched out nursing bra. She's like, well, like, you don't have any size? I'm like, no, like I've been wearing this disgusting sports nursing bra for two years. So she got me these new bras. I feel like a new woman. I'm like, Sean, look at this. Like, I didn't even know I could look like this anymore. And um, I didn't have any pain, really, for drying up um, because I, I did it, I spread it out. It wasn't like, no more milk starting today. <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> um, so I didn't just go cold turkey. I did have some leakage, so my friend Kate is on here, and she she weaned like a few days before me, and two funny stories. She was like, Ashley, you know, we, we stopped weaning, we stopped nursing, and then I cried. And I was like, that's ridiculous, like, I'm not gonna cry, I'm gonna be so excited, I'm gonna jump for joy. And you guys, that night I had the goodbye party with her, and was like, that's it, we're done nursing. I ugly cried, I was hysterical, I was like bawling, and Sean was like, what is wrong with you? And I'm like, oh my gosh, like, I am so sad. This was such a good bonding experience. And he was like, Ashley, do you know how many mother-daughter experiences you have ahead of you? How many cool things you're going to get to do with her and how you're going to get to bond with her in so many different ways? Like, it's okay for you to close this chapter of your relationship now and move on to bigger and better things. And I was like, you're right. Like, there is so much ahead for us. So I am okay being done with breastfeeding her. We had our time we had a run it went great and now I'm so looking forward to all these amazing things we have ahead of us so if you are struggling and you're like I want to wean but I feel bad like think of all the fun things ahead of you um, but anyway so Eliz uh, Kate did tell me that she had leaking like a week after what you want to watch Moana okay we'll go see Moana <laughs> um, and I did have leaking, so I just kind of like, you know, massaged a little bit and a little bit more came out, like self-expressed, self hand-expressed, I don't know what it's called, mm -hmm. and that got some of it out, and then it relieved the pressure, and it's been fine, mm -hmm. and um, now all is good. They're like, I think they're dried out. I think, I think it takes a while for them to dry out, but they're way smaller than they mm -hmm. used to be, and I'm feeling good in a sexier bra, ladies. Back to my old self. <laughs> and yes, she definitely still is a mommy's girl. And so I'm leaving her this week for four days to go to this conference. I cried this morning about it. I am like sick to my stomach. Sick to my stomach about it. But um, 
I know that it's going to be good and I'm going to learn some good things and be more productive and then I'll be able to spend more time with her and give her more attention, right? So that's how it goes. So anyway, I hope this helped. I'm going to look through your comments um, afterwards and respond to you there because I have to like reach over to look at the phone and she's here. But I just wanted to be totally upfront with you and share some things because nobody tells you how hard it is to get them off. They're like breastfeed, breastfeed, but then they don't tell you to stop. And I, I mean, if you have somebody who, if you have a kid who's self-weaned, that's such a blessing. Like it's really hard to tell them no when that's all they want. You know that all they want and you can comfort them so quickly. And so to let them sit there and cry is so hard, you guys. It is so hard. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like it was, are you sleeping? Oh my, I think she's falling asleep. She did give up her nap. Here's another thing. Once I weaned her, she stopped napping, but now she's asleep in my arms. How funny is that? <laughs> um, okay, so anyway, I'm gonna go put her in bed, I think. But um, she stopped napping because I wasn't nursing her to sleep. I can't let her sleep now, it's five o'clock. Almost five o'clock, right? She'll be up all night, so I gotta wake her up. But anyway, it's really hard, but you just gotta stick with it, and kind of, I'll post the link that I used below. If you have any other questions, let me know. Good luck, ladies. Stay strong. And yeah, Anna, Anna, so did yours. Almost everybody I talked to, again, all the moms I talked to whose mom, whose kids were like mine, who were like super attached, when they were weaned, they gave up that afternoon nap. When I went to the pediatrician, I asked her, and the pediatrician was like, no, kids nap till they're four. No, no, clearly they don't because she gave up her nap and everyone I know's kids gave up their nap, but then she sleeps six, 12 hours a night, so that's really nice. So that's a nice benefit. Okay, I'm gonna stop rambling. If you need anything, let me know. Thanks so much for tuning in. And no, that's my dog snoring. I have two pugs and they're right underneath me snoring very loudly. She's not snoring, but I gotta wake her up. Okay, London, you may say bye. She woke up to say bye to you guys. Say bye. Bye. <laughs>